Hey, what is up, everybody? Michael Crump back here again, talking about the latest and the greatest in PlayStation, homebrew news, and much, much more. So I wanted to provide a bit of an update, especially with what we've had over maybe the last 24 hours or so. So just to kind of recap, the repo that Spectre Dev has had kernel support for PlayStation 5 version 4.03, 4.50, and 4.51. Yesterday, we received a fork of this repo by Chap, and basically, they are working over here in this branch called the WIP branch, so the Work in Progress branch. And if we kind of hover over this dialogue right here, we can see that they have added full 3.0 support, add more partial 3.10 support, and then fixed the dump server bug. And if we scroll down into this, you can see that the exploit now should support the following firmwares. So 3.0, 3.10, 3.20, 3.21, and then the normal 4.x. And if we scroll up into this, we can see that there is active work that's being made on this right now. Now, this will ultimately be merged back into the main repo, but for right now, the main repo is just covering all of the 4.x, whereas Chindo Chap is going to be covering basically the 3.x as well as the 4.x. If you followed my last video from John Torblum, basically we had BD-JB on a 3.20 system. Now, in that video, which I'll link to, you'll note that we didn't have things such as debug settings or an FTP server. Obviously, with this being in WebKit and then based off of the work that Spectre Dev has created, now on a 3.20 system, we will have the ability to get debug settings as well as an FTP server running. And so in this video, I wanted to take a 3.20 system that I have and go ahead and explore this web kit with each and every one of you. So with that being said, let's jump over to the PlayStation 5. Okay, so over on my PlayStation 5 here, I'm going to go into settings and we're going to go down to system, system software, and then console information. And there we are. We're at 3.20. Now, the first thing that you will need to do is to obviously go into your network here, go down into settings, and then set up internet connection. And then from here, I can select the options button. Actually, they changed it in 3.20. You would actually press the X button on it and then go down to advanced settings. And from here, you can see I've already filled out my primary DNS and my secondary DNS. Obviously, the primary DNS is what we've been using all along. So you can change yours to that if you want to give this a shot as well. So once we do that, I'm going to simply scroll back and I'm going to go into my user guide, user guide, user guide again. And we're going to select yes there. I'm going to press L2 twice. I'm going to go up to the URL redirector. And since Echo Stretch has went ahead and updated his server, we're just going to use that one. So we're going to ES7N1.site and let's press R2 and let's press submit. Now, from what I have done and played with already, do keep in mind that this does not seem as stable, at least on my machine, for running a 3.20 partial jailbreak here. So let's see how well that it works today. Now there are two hosts that's currently out here. Obviously the jailbreak that is by Spectre. And then there is another more visual application that Nosky has created right over here. So you should absolutely, you know, check out either one of these. We're going to use Spectre just for this demo. And so I'm going to press X here. Down at the bottom, you should see where it says version 1.02. Okay, so let's see how well this one goes. Maybe I have better luck this time. I'm going to hit OK there. 
Okay, it worked. Um, I do feel like there may be something with these exploits and coming in from a completely cold boot. Uh, let me know down in the comments below, have you had better success with some of these things coming off of a cold boot? Because my PlayStation 5 was just booted up right before this video. So now I'm going to go ahead and I am going to send the same ELF file that we had before. And so we should see that pop-up notification again, just like we've seen in some of my previous videos. So there is our FTP server and it is running. And so now I am just going to press the PlayStation button and get out of this. And we'll go back again and let's go back into settings. Let's scroll down again, and there we go. We have debug settings on a system that is running 3.20. So that is very cool. Now, I wonder down into these debug settings here if everything is absolutely identical. Now, I'm sure there's probably some things that's changed between the releases, so that may be interesting for a, another video. But let's see when I first booted this PlayStation 5 up. So I booted this one back up on February the 3rd, 2022. I do believe though that I had this one in a box before I actually turned it on and powered it up. Uh, anyway, it's kind of neat for me to go back and see the history of when I originally turned on these uh, PlayStation 5s that I've got because they've just been sitting in a box for so long waiting for something like this. And so now that we've checked the debug settings there, we will actually need to run the exploit again to get the FTP. I'll go ahead and do that and I'll meet you back over on the PC. Okay, so over on the PC, we're in FileZilla. There is the host. No username and password. Again, this is for my PlayStation 5. The port again is 1337 and quick connect. And there we go. So now at least on a 3.20 system, we do have the ability to come in here and have an FTP server. So very cool. So anyway, that's going to do it for this one. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and leave a like down below. I'll see you on the next one. Michael, ow!